Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk about Proxmox and how to connect a Ceph cluster with your Proxmox. In the case of a Proxmox, you have already a virtualized system where you could install Ceph and have a bunch of nodes where you manage your Ceph instance inside of your Prox cluster. And that could be a good solution. But if you already have a Ceph cluster up and running and want some virtualized servers, or if you want to separate the concerns between two different systems, then connecting a Ceph cluster to your Proximus system could be a good idea. I would not run virtual hosts and a Ceph cluster on the same drives because that could be really complicated and could also hinder your uh, performance a bit because you need to use the same CPUs to handle the actual data mass as you would do with your virtualization mass. So I would separate those concerns anyway, but you could of course do that inside of a Proxmox cl cluster. But let's switch over to my screen here. Here I have Proxmox and currently we have a local LVM where we could store uh, VM disks and volumes and then we have a local file system where we could have ISO images and CT templates and I want to switch those out to use set file system and also use RBD uh, in a Ceph. So uh, in order to do that I already have a Ceph cluster with one node uh, on um, IP31 installed. So what I can do here is go into data center, storage, add, and then I can add a Ceph file system. I can say this is Ceph FS. It's on the monitor 168.631. And uh, the username, I could say file system here. And the file system name is FS in my file system. And then I can also say what I want to store here. So I would store dump files, ISO images, container templates, snippets, everything should be stored there. And then I need a secret key. So let's create that one. So let's switch over to my cluster here. So here I have the cluster with the client admin. So I could use that key if I want, but I could also create a new key here. So here we have the FS authorize CephFS, so that this is the actual name of my uh, CephFS, client dot, so I will create a new client, I will call it file system, I want to give it access to slash, so the whole thing, you could restrict it more and have just an, one directory further down in your file system, and I want to give it read write, so I can create the things there. If I run that, I will get this key here. So I will copy this key for the file system user, like that, and then go back here and paste it in. So that is the file system user that it uses that key. So now I have something where I can store things and it's enabled here. So I could disable the other one here because that is no longer needed. So now I don't have that here. A directory where I can store things. Now I restore that on CephFS. So the next thing I want to replace here is the local LVM which handles the disk image and the container. So I will go in here and disable that one and we'll create a new RBD pool. So or RBD instance here. So I will have an RBD. I can give it that name or I can say volumes here. I can have that ID as well. The pool in my cluster is actually called RBD pool. It's all created and ready as an RBD pool already. Um, and then I will do a new, the IP to that single host. So it's 31 on the end. The username I will use here is volumes. We haven't created that yet, but we will do that. I want to select what should be used here. So disk image and container. I will store both of those there. Now I need a key ring, so we will create this user volumes. So go back to my Ceph, uh, cluster here, and then I will copy paste this command. So I will do sudo ceph auth add the client of volumes with osd 
profile RBD. So all data in the data storage systems should be handled uh, as RBD. You could handle RBD requests. The monitor should also allow RBD requests, read writes. And I also added the manager here. It's so you can actually see it in the Ceph admin. I'm not sure if uh, Proxmox will use that as an API to get data, but we'll add that here as well. So if we do that, we have added the key. We have the Ceph volume. If I do sudo Ceph auth ls, we can see that it actually is created here. It's client volumes here. And I can do get client volumes and then I will get the actual key file here. So the key ring. So I will copy th that thing over to here and paste it in so I have the key ring. So now we have an RBD pool here. It's enabled, it's shared. If we go over here, we should get some status message here. We see that we have used 50 megabytes already of the uh, 20 gigabytes available there. And this FFS also has 20 gigabytes available. So what I can do now is go over to the actual client here and I can create a new VM. Um, but before I can create a new VM, of course, we need some images. So we go in here and we will go to our CephFS. We go ISO image, we can upload an image. So I will select a file here. I have already uh, Debian install here, so I will put in that and upload it. So now we'll handle a Debian image here. There it's done. So now it's just put it into Proxmox so it could be available to our system. And there the task is available. We can go into CT templates, we can select templates, and here they have an Ubuntu that I can install. I will download that as well. Yes, so we have. Uh, CT templates, we can run a container uh, template here as well. So close that down. I have both of them now. They, these are now stored in our CephFS. And then I want to create something in our, in our volumes. And for this system, I will create a new VM. Uh, the ID of 100 is okay. I will create it in as test. I will select this ISO image that we have stored there already in the system. All this is fine. The disk here, let's say that we create two gigabytes, a SCSI, CPU, and it will use the storage system of volumes and cache, no cache, socket cores. Everything is standard for uh, a Proxmox system when you create a v, uh, virtual host. And I will not start this because I can't start it on my system. Uh, I can, can run uh, containers, but I can't run VMs because I don't have that uh, capability in my environment here. But we can see here that it created a disk here of two gigabytes. And then I can create the um, CT, give it a host name of test, give it a password here. So I can actually log into it later on. And next template, do this Ubuntu image that we had, uh, disk, again volumes, can give it 8 gigabytes, we have space, one core, memory, 512, it's okay, network, DNS, confirm, finish. So now it should create that container image. It takes a little while there too because it needs to First off, create the actual file system, then extract the full archive over there in order to actually have it available to you. There the task is available. And if I go here and start this one, this should work even in my environment. This is a virtual host, so it can start containers, can start VMs. And there it started, I can open the console and here we should see an Ubuntu screen come up, so I can actually log into it. And there it is. And then we do admin, or is it perhaps a root? Try that. Yeah. Here we have an Ubuntu running inside of Proxmox, stored in a Ceph cluster. And um, yeah. 
So this is how you go through and actually set up Proxmox so you have your Ceph cluster externally and connect it into your Proxmox cluster with the somewhat correct capabilities and uh, also having the right kind of users for the different systems. You could be more restrictive. You could actually give the file system just a part of the file system. You could restrict to a specific RBD pool and so on. Uh, there is a lot of different selections you can do in the Ceph in order to make your security as tight as possible. The less capabilities that you give your users, the more secure you will be. But of course, if you don't give them enough, they can't do their work, they can't use the system as intended. I hope that you found this interesting, I hope that you learned something today. If you liked this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you have any comments or suggestions, leave them down in the comment section down below. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that, and I really hope to see you in the next video.